the town. What up, players? It's the morning after with Nick and Big J. Welcome to Friday. We made it through yet another week, Big J. It is the fourth day of October, 2024. My name is Nick. There's Big J right over there. Yeah. Happy Friday to you, Big J. Yeah, boy. Thank God. Ah, uh, thank God it is Friday. It's a it's a say, it's a saying that started in, on ABC in the '90s, and it carries over. Maybe even more true today than ever before. But you don't celebrate by watching questionable sitcoms, do you, Big J? No. no. How do you celebrate your Friday? I, I don't know. Well, by going to uh, Dollar uh, Loan Center at three o'clock today. And never a greater <laughs> celebration you will find is Big J will have tickets to give away, all sorts of cool things going I'll have on. A grip of them, I think. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, if you like free things, then I would recommend the Dollar Loan Center. going to be out there today, hey, the one on McMillan. How was the show last night? I did not go to the show last night. What Big happened? Uh, I ended up getting really depressed is what it, is what it really boiled down to as uh, I was watching the uh, Milwaukee Brewers crap away a lead in the bottom, the top of the ninth oh, you inning. you were so excited I to go to the show. I was geeked to go to the show, and I was getting ready to go. I and promised then them they would see you. It was uh, it was the seventh inning, and I was like, all right, I'm going to go as soon as, and then the Brewers back-to-back home you runs got, to give them a 2 You got drunk, lead. you? You got wasted. No, I did not have a... You were the game, and did, you were depressed, and you got wasted. Did not have a drip of alcohol last night at all. And so uh, I ended up watching it, and then uh, they get to the they they brought in Freddie Peralta in the eighth, and I was like, oh man, they're going to shut him down. Devin Williams comes in and uh, just gives up a three run dinger to the to the Mets, and then they follow up with another run, and I was like, and then I started getting in my bag, and I was like, man, every time I get excited about a Milwaukee sports team, they do this to me every single time. Doesn't matter if it's the mm-hmm. Bucks or the Brewers. This is a four straight year for the Brewers who. Nobody picks them to win the Central Division, and they win, and uh, they win running away. Their 10-game lead in that division, nobody could touch them all year. The second they get to the playoffs, it's absolute collapse, and it happens with the Bucks every year, and it happens with the Brewers every year. Well, I mean, and not it was every year. I mean, the Bucks did win an a-, a championship. Yeah, do you remember when that was, Big J? Four years ago? Yeah, yeah, it was four years ago. It's better than no years. No, it's true. But the Brewers have never won a championship, and uh, and Touché. they are, they had the be- probably the best opportunity to do so. Although, listen, I don't think anybody's knocking off the Dodgers, but still, it was it was nice to see them as everybody had them buried after Craig Council abandoned the team to move across the street to the Chicago Cubs. All the start they traded away their two best pitchers in the offseason. They had given up on this season, and this team somehow rallied together. And then uh, the one thing I hate about baseball playoffs is everything about your strategy changes going into these games oh, yeah. because you play not to lose instead of to win. And that's what happened last yeah. night. Infuriate. And now you know why I didn't go because now I'm all worked up again today. You're going to root for the Tigers now? Uh, no, I'm not going to root for anybody no. right now. Okay. Uh, now I'm just angry about everything. Damn. And Jesus, so, uh, I regret my yeah. Team. And that now is. Now you know how I feel about follow up questions. <laughs> that, but I have answers this time. I can tell you why. And so uh, it is certainly not something that I was happy about. But I get to take my mind off it today by playing some music. And thank you for that. (laughs) Corn, now it's Freak on a Leash on the X Rocks. Important stuff. On the morning after with Nick and Big J. Important stuff brought to you by Dollar Loan Center. Big J going to be out there today broadcasting live 3 to 5 p.m. at the one on McMillan Road there, 13601 West McMillan Road. The official address. Swing on by. Say hello to Big J on your way home from work today and win some stuff from the Extract Stock. Maybe check out all the information you need to know about Dollar Loan Center. Of course, they are the proud sponsor of Textual Healing, giving you an opportunity to win $500 every single weekday. So make sure you stop by and say hi to Big J today out at Dollar Loan Center's 13601 West McMillan from 3 to 5 with 100.3 The X Rocks. Good news, Big J, at least for now. A tentative deal on wages has been reached between the Longshoremen's Association and the United States Maritime Alliance. That means the three-day strike that halted shipping along the U.S. East and Gulf Coast is officially over at least until January of next year. The agreement extends the union's contract until that particular month and allows negotiations on other contract terms to continue. The exact wages weren't disclosed, but a report suggests that it was a 62% pay increase over six years. 
The strike was the largest in 50 years, disrupted shipping from Maine to Texas. It did cause some delays, mostly in things like uh, produce and larger things like auto parts. But with the deal in place, work was set to resume immediately and did. So no need for you to run to the store and hit the panic button and stock up on stuff. Uh, things should be back and rolling as of yesterday and into today, too. I think the way people do it, they like it. They like doing it. They like going and buying as much stuff as they can in case... Nothing's going to happen. Uh, I think you're right. I, I believe that people have some sort of sense and pride in feeling like they are more prepared than somebody else or they have inside information or they were ahead of the game or whatever, which it ends up being the reason why we actually have the shortages, not because yeah. we're running out yeah. of stuff. It's because people hoard the things at the beginning of right. it and cause problems down the line when they didn't really need to in the first place, which is probably exactly what was happening here. It's called the walking dead effect. <laughs> I mean, you know, there's lots of reasons to do these things, but uh, none of them were instantaneous, nor were we ever in risk of anything falling away or running out of stuff. It was uh, at best the delay, which you can understand. But uh, of course, then nothing ended up happening because it was only a three day deal. But uh, listen, man, nobody wants to be stuck without toilet paper. Big J. Sure, what, sure. what is option number two for Big J? Option yeah, number no two? T no TP. Paper towel, uh, throw it on the garbage. Outside. Water hose. All right, yeah. Old school. Burr. Sure. Burr. Hop in the shower, whatever it takes to get the job done. Homecoming is tomorrow on the blue for your number 21 ranked Boise State Broncos. They're taking on Utah State. Five o'clock kickoff. Going to be an absolute beautiful day. 74 degrees, sunny. Uh, the game is going to be on Fox Sports 2 if you're not going to make it. It's also sold out. We need a final score prediction, Big J, for homecoming. Yeah, I don't know at all where Utah State is in this world, but I'm going to say 54 to 21 Broncos. All right. Uh, we should start doing this. How many touchdowns for Ashton Genty in the game? Eight. Eight. I mean, uh, let's, go with, uh, let's go with four. All right, let's another, another four-touchdown four. game. His stats are already ridiculous. Rid Ridiculous. Yes. That would be the third of the season, which would be crazy this particular point. But uh, we'll see what ends up happening. Best of luck to the Broncos. Uh, again, you can uh, you can check out the game on Fox Sports 2. How many of those touchdowns will be of 50 yards or greater? Yeah, that's the real question. <laughs> also, I'm going to say one. How many broken tackles we can start betting 72. on as well? Big J, Jimmy Kimmel says thanks, but no thanks. He doesn't want to be the Oscars host anymore, but uh, there are a possibility that there could be some co-hosts coming in on this action. You and me, dude. Yeah, let's do it. No, we have not ex got the invitation extended to us. I don't think you would host the Oscars, even if given the opportunity. With you, I would. Because uh, you'd have to sing. I mean, that's almost <clears throat> part of the requirement for you to do so. You're paying me, man. Uh, and uh, you all I know is the one time that you tried to sing, it didn't go well. Uh, that's the I national was, anthem, of course. Listen, I was not prepared for that. I mean, I'll get some <laughs> rehearsal time. So next year's show could have a couple of co-hosts, Hugh Jackman and Ryan Reynolds, Big J. They have uh, emerged as an answer to not only, uh, you know, somebody that people would enjoy, but also they have a proven uh, idea of pulling in people to check it out, especially people that may not be wanting to watch the Oscars. The chemistry, of course, was on display as they promoted the biggest movie of the year, Deadpool and Wolverine. Uh, and so we will see. Uh, Ryan can sing, so there's that uh, as well. Oh, but Hugh Jackman you. has, uh, has of course, he, he you know he, Hugh can yeah. sing. He's a Tony host. He has uh, been on Broadway. He has hosted major awards before. This is right in Hugh's wheelhouse. Whether or not Ryan Reynolds goes along for the ride uh, is another question altogether. No offer has been extended. They're just kind of floating things around to see what the interest would be. I'm guessing you would be all in on this particular tandem. Yeah. Hell yeah, man. Why uh, wouldn't you? I know you said that sometimes hosts would make you want to watch award shows and then you forget that they're on. This one, I believe I, you I, actually would watch. I don't think the world would let us forget that they were hosting either if that was to be the case. Well, Ryan Reynolds certainly wouldn't. Yeah. He'd be all over his social media. You yeah. know that. Morning After with Nick and Big J. There's your first round of important stuff. Here's traffic inside the TV. That's the latest from Lincoln Park, the emptiness machine here on The Morning After with Nick and Big J. Add something else to the list of things that are going to kill you eventually. It might be killing you uh, already and you didn't even know it. Because there is a yeah. new study out that shows that the black plastic used to make the kitchen utensils that you normally get from like fast food places or takeout places. You know, they usually come like pre-wrapped with like a really flimsy yeah. napkin yeah. in there. And they've got the, uh, the fork and the knife and the spoon. Uh, those uh, could contain common items that are to toxic to the human uh, race, Big J. 
Uh, it Makes has, sense. It has up to 22,800 parts per million of bromine, which is used to make flame retardants, and that's way more than you want touching your food. Potential health problems include uh, basically neurotoxicity, reproductive and developmental toxicity. It turns out the big problem is recycling. When you recycle something like a TV, the plastic casing is often recycled into these kitchen items, and it turns out those aren't great for you is what it boils down to. We should put that in stuff. Uh, we have that we that we eat with, and so and we microwave stuff with. Uh, yeah. Uh, you you microwave plastic well, no, utensils? No, but I mean, there are all kinds. Of, even microwavable safe stuff is sure. made with plastic. Yeah. Well, it's not all plastics. It's a particular no. type of plastics that try are to being convince used. me these other things aren't killing us too. Uh, well, plastics for a long time have uh, had some sort of relation to toxicity. It's not something yeah. new. Plastics oh, have yeah. been for a long time something that they've said, "Hey, be careful of this." We have somewhat done a pretty good job of ignoring those warnings and just kind of doing what we do. Listen, we're really good at ignoring some of that stuff. Do you do you use the the, the utensils that are given to you a lot when you're eating? I don't because uh, they're flimsy and crappy and break easily. So I'm like, nah, I don't want this. Yeah, I'm of the same way. I, I don't know what it is. Uh, even if like I'll get like uh, the the stuff that they send me, I'll usually just grab a fork of my own. I don't know why. Yeah. Uh, I, it's uh, it's a little bit of effort, but it is always something that I have done. But still, something to be aware of. So we can add this to the list of things that are probably uh, killing us on a regular basis, Big J. Yeah. So check black plastic utensils off your list of things that you can have in the Big J household, please. And thank you. Morning mm-hmm. after with Nick and Big J. Big J's got the song of the week for you coming up. It's on the way here on the X Rocks. <laughs> System of a Down Aerials here on the morning after with Nick and Big J. Every single Friday, Big J selects a song to get the blood flowing, keep you heading into the weekend on a positive note. We first we find out the what, then we find out the why. Big J, what is it today? Uh, it is Letters from the Fire, a song called Eleanor Rigby. All right, check it out. Here's Big J song of the week on the X Rocks. There's Big J's song, The Letters from the Fire, Eleanor Rigby, here on The Morning After with Nick and Big J. Big J, what you picking that song for? Picking that song, Nick, uh, actually for you, uh, because uh, you love the Beatles. I do love the Beatles. And uh, the last time we played the Beatles here on the X Rocks, uh, it didn't go over great. Even you were befuddled of how that happened. I was livid. That uh, that so uh, <laughs> that's from Letters from the Fire, uh, Free X Show alumni. It's a great cover of that song, but... Uh, it's for you, Nick, because this weekend is your birthday weekend. It's true. And uh, so I figured I better get you a birthday present. And I, instead of making you wait eight or nine weeks for it, uh, <laughs> I'll find one locally. And uh, so I don't know how this is going to go because uh, I, I, I I thought for sure this was a home run. So we'll see how this goes. But last night at the show, uh, you know, we did a meet and greet with the Bad Flower Band. Yeah. And uh, it was really great. They did a quick little sound check. But they have this really cool thing they do at every show. They have a special vinyl, Nick. That includes uh, songs from Slothrust, Missio, and Bad Flower, all covering each other's out. Oh, that really? Uh, other songs, That's yeah. That's awesome. And uh, they uh, sell only 30 of these a night. Oh, nice. So super, and they all autograph this. Oh, So there thanks, you go, man. man. I figured you'd really like that, it. but then you ditched the show, so I don't know if you I care did about ditch it or it, not, it has but... nothing to do with the bands, however, why I ditched the show, because I, I love it. I thought that was a really cool that thing. That is really, really cool. I, I thought that was badass, so I don't know if they're ever going to you know, officially sell those or whatever but you know I, I haven't had a chance to listen to that obviously but uh, there you go man happy birthday what a brilliant idea for bands that tour together to do yeah. this stuff and they're to make all it friends available. they all really yeah, like each yeah. other so. this is awesome thank you man yeah. i really do appreciate it it's great thank you yeah maybe show the camera that oh i forget that sometimes that we're on camera yeah there you go there yeah you go. Awesome. And they cover things like uh, Sloth Rust covers Jester. God, I wonder what that sounds like. I bet you it's great. <laughs> I know, man. Uh, it's some cool stuff. So thank you very much, man. I appreciate it. That's awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, and thank you for playing uh, Letters from the Fire. Whatever happened to those guys? Uh, I think they kind of threw in the towel. You know, Elliot left, and then they had, uh, I forget what her name was. She was in the band for a while. Yeah, they came through with her. We and did a free act show Mike, with them. the guitarist, he was kind of the, uh, you know, the engine behind that, and uh, I think he decided to leave music behind, so... It happens so often with some fantastic bands, but we are happy to be part of the Letters from the Fire story, and thank you very much for the album. I do appreciate that You betcha, brother. Morning After with Nick and Big J. Coming up in a few minutes, your important stuff. Also, we're going to hell. It's the X.
important stuff. Hey, what's going on in the news today? The Morning After with Nick and Big J. The important stuff brought to you by Dollar Loan Center. Big J appearing live today, 3 to 5 p.m. at the Dollar Loan Center, 13601 West McMillan Road. You'll have an opportunity to see a live broadcast, win some stuff from the X-Rock stock, including a bunch of tickets Big J will have access to out there today and learn a little bit more about Dollar Loan Center, your proud sponsors of Textual Healing, where you can win $500 a day just for listening to the radio station and texting in. So if you need some cash, go check out Big J today. If you need some concert tickets, go check out Big J today. Dollar Loan Center, 3 to 5, 13601 West McMillan Road with Dollar Loan Center and the X-Rocks. Big J, it's back again. People getting rich off of Airbnbs, Big J. Uh, you kind of thought the fad had gone away, but people are making money again without buying a single property. What they're doing, Big J, is submitting their rentals and then subletting them for other people to stay in. It's called Airbnb arbitrage, and it's possible arbitrage. because listings don't have to show who actually owns a property. So it's an opportunity for younger people to make some serious cash if they live in a buzzing city that lots of people visit. They rent out their place. They rent the place, rent that out an Airbnb for a significant upgrade, and then use that money to pay the rent and then stay at like a hotel or something. Uh, and so it's very interesting to see this thing come to fruition. I kind of thought the Airbnb fad had phased out a little bit, but I guess it's still right back up there a little uh, and being popular again. Uh, the startup costs are also lower than buying a home, which is why Airbnb is a good play to get rich quick or at least to make a little bit of money. However, there are some opponents to the idea that note that Airbnbs take long-term housing off the market. Of course, lots of people dislike when there's lots of Airbnbs in their particular location because that make rent the rent amount go up in particular areas. Also, people coming and going that maybe are respectful for the area and their surroundings. And so... There are positives and negatives to each one of these things, but it's a interesting way to see people make some cash as like a side hustle or just a full on hustle. Who knows? Yeah. But I have never uh, rented out my place or any place that I've had as an Airbnb, so I don't know the process, nor do I don't know what you would have to do to get into it. But hey, listen, if you can make money off it, knock yourself out, man. Whatever you can do. That's right. Exactly. We've got homecoming this weekend on the blue at Albertson Stadium. Boise State taking on Utah State, your number 21 Broncos back in action. Kickoff 5 o'clock tomorrow. You can find it on Fox Sports 2 if you're not going to the game. Big J, your final score prediction once again. 54-21 Broncos. Congratulations, and we will see how it all comes and shakes out tomorrow. It's also official. Kalen Clark, who just had a rookie season for the ages, had won the WNBA Rookie of the Year Award after smashing multiple records. Not only did she set the single-season rookie scoring record, she also broke the league's assist record. And her stellar play led the Indiana Fever to their first playoff appearance since 2016. Considering this is just her first year in the league, the expectations were high coming in. You'd think she had a pretty good season, so congratulations yeah. to Kalen Clark for winning Rookie of the Year. It's probably how it should have went down, despite the uh, the arguments. Big J, I know you didn't ca- go to the actual Comic-Con when Sean Austin was in town, but it was very well attended, and he was very popular and a very nice man. And now, Big J, he's making his Broadway debut. Ooh. He will be playing Santa in the revival of Elf the Musical, alongside Gray Henson playing Buddy the Elf. He is a Tony nominee, Gray Henson is. Uh, of course, Sean Astin has been in a lot of things. This is his first time in the Great White Way, though. Uh, the limited engagement will be at the Marquee Theater beginning November 9th, ending January 4th of next year. And, of course, this musical has been very successful over in London, and now it's making its way over to the New York Broadway, which, of course, is where all plays go if they want to make it, make it. Pop Quiz, do you remember who played Santa in the original 2003 movie, Elf, Big J? Oh, uh... Very famous actor. Ed Asner? That's right. Ed yeah. Asner knocked it up. Uh, And then in the original Broadway production, it was played by George Wendt. Do you remember him, Big J? Yeah, of course, Norm. That's right, from Cheers. I'm on fire, baby. Additional cast members will be announced later, but congratulations to Sean for making his Broadway debut coming up. Uh, And uh, I'm sure tickets for that will sell out fairly quickly, as most Broadway shows do. Morning After with Nick and Big J. There's your important stuff. We're going to go to hell. It's next on the X Rocks. Incredibly f***ed up. Oh, man, we're going to hell. Oh, you know they're both going to hell, right? The Morning After with Nick and Big J on 100.3 The X Rocks. 
To Pasadena, California we go for today's We're Going to Hell story. And welcome to a very special episode of Detective Big J. Oh. There's a mystery, Big J. It needs to be solved. We need your help. Are you ready for the clues to be laid out before you? Yeah. Again, we're in Pasadena, California, fairly large city, home of the Rose Bowl. It's a gigantic place. Lots of people. Could be anybody. But for years, somebody has been leaving bottles on top of an electrical box in Pasadena. Oh, no. And inside those bottles have been notes that are very difficult to read. Nobody wants to open them up. Why, Big J? They're covered in urine. Close. Bottles are filled with urine. Yeah. Or at least a very, very... Yeah, uh, that's not Mountain Dew. ...dark yellow <laughs> liquid that makes everybody think it's urine. And so for the past two years, the electrical box has had at least three to four urine bottles on top of it, and people want to know who's dropping off bottles of pee. Now, uh, they say it's not your normal run-of-the-mill truck driver bottle, but assortment of different sizes, different colors. Sometimes uh, hand-drawn notes are on them, and they're trying to figure out what's going on. This particular electrical box in question is on Colorado Boulevard, south of the 134 freeway. Very busy traffic area. Mm. And I'm sure, Detective Big J, you being good at your job, what will be the first solution to this problem to try to figure this out? Uh, look at cameras. There you go. Look at the cameras around the area. And so uh, since June of last year, a couple of people, filmmaker Grant Yansura and uh, his friend Milton and a couple other buddies, have been investigating by purchasing a bunch of security cameras and installing them. Uh, they've also put on together different disguises to try to be there when it happens. Uh, they put together a whole series of videos on TikTok and Instagram kind of documenting their quest to figure out who this P bandit is. The first time they ever captured anything was just a phantom arm descending from above. Oh, there's a brick wall right by this particular uh, actual electric rate, and somebody had like plopped a, 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 a bottle of P over the wall, and so they didn't get it. Next time they put up a camera, the camera was stolen with its GPS eventually revealing it had been brought to San Diego. Uh, and so they don't have any, well, they have some shadowy footage of a man dropping off some bottles. They don't have anything, certainly, that they can say is documentized proof of any kind of identifiable, identifiable characteristics of the person that's doing this. So they continue to post videos. They continue to do things. They continue to rack up millions upon millions of views on their particular channel. Uh, and according to these, the, the people that put together the videos, uh, Grant, Milton, and, and the others, they've collected a sample from one of the bottles, and uh, they determined the liquid was urine inside the bottle. So it is, in fact, pee. Now they're still trying to figure out who is doing it. They say they have recently installed new cameras at the scene, but Big J, do you have any guesses as a working detective on this case? No, I, I don't. I have none. Not a single one? Pee Squatch? You're no help at all. Uh, no. You want to know my hot take? Sure. It's the filmmakers that are doing this. They are uh, they are setting up the cameras. They are putting together this narrative. They are editing up these videos. They are uh, they are continuing to post them online so they get millions upon millions of views. And uh, it is them that's actually behind this prank from the word go. That's that's my very slanted, very uh, you know kind of I guess finger pointing accusation. I have no proof to say this, but I'm saying if you set up cameras and you've gone through elaborate skits and you've filmed yourself dressing up in costumes so that you can possibly take a look at the person doing this and all your cameras that you have set up have been able to put together is an arm and a shadowy figure, my guess is you're in on the gig. Yeah. And it's probably something. And I wouldn't be shocked if this stuff wasn't actually pee and it was all just part of their elaborate thing to do a social media prank. But it's been going on for almost two years. It's reached uh, a point where people and papers in Pasadena are now officially covering the thing. So there's some validity to it, or at least they made it a story. So there's that. And, you know, it's just your regular looking electrical box that just has like anywhere from four to six bottles of urine on top of it. And so this is the pee banded story. Are you uh, refusing the case, Big J? Yeah. Any further yeah. evidence? All right. Well, yep. Detective Big J was a bust, and I apologize to the people that passed. I didn't get all the actual facts, but uh, I have all the facts that have, as they've been presented to the paper anyway. The old, the, the old Pasadena Times, but they're still looking out for it, so watch out. But yeah, it's my guess is the people that are putting together the video. Morning after with Nick and Big J. There's your "We're Going to Hell" story. It is the X Rocks. <laughs> 
That is Chevelle. That's the red here on the morning after with Nick and Big J. Big J, you do not have an iPhone, but no. several members of your family do. Mm-hmm. All of them. How often is Siri used in the Big J household? They never use Siri at all. No. And I'm like, well, I don't understand. Uh, you would, you're saying? Well, if, yeah, if you got it, why wouldn't you? I mean, sometimes I use my voice assistant. But not very much. Or no. do you? No, no, okay. no. But I mean, you know, quit asking me the weather. Just ask your Siri. They, your family asks you what the weather is? Yeah. The other day. <laughs> hey, what's the weather going to be like? I'm like, you know how I'm going to find out? I'm going to look at my phone. You got one. <laughs> quit playing your game and check out what the weather is. Uh, those of you that do use Siri may be equally as frustrated as some iPhone users are. Apparently, there is a feature that was introduced late last year called Check-In, which is something that's starting to freak people out. What it does is Siri will automatically make suggestions for you to contact uh, people that are in the area that you're in. So it, like, you know, uses your, your essentially, you know, your location tracking mm-hmm. to find out if you have somebody in your contact list on your phone that lives or is in that particular area and says, hey, you should reach out to blank because they are near the same vicinity you're in. And it's creeping people out because uh, one of the problems is, you know, people are getting recommended to reach out to their exes and that's not great. Uh, apparently, uh, it's it, Siri's been notifying one user to contact her deceased mother, which of course is also trauma inducing, which is not something that's very fun. And then frequently, you know, if you're in the area of somebody that's barely a contact, it's also kind of creepy. Like, uh, there are people that say, you know, my boss has an iPhone, I have an iPhone, and whenever I'm in the same vicinity as my boss, who I don't know that well, it's saying, hey, why don't you contact your boss? And it's a weird feature that's making people uh, feel a little bit freaked out by it. They feel like it's intrusive, and uh, if you have any kind of, like, borderline or bad relationship or something, to be careful using the feature, because it could be something that ends up being an event or a name that you no longer want to hear and that could be a problem and again you know uh, apple has said on many occasions they're trying to tweak this thing but they don't appreciate it being tweaked with their messing around with their algorithm just because they want to try out a new feature it, it does not say however whether or not this feature can be turned on or off i imagine it can most can what the process is to do that i'm not exactly sure well you can tur- turn siri off all the way off so, right yeah uh, they so, don't even have Siri turned on, my family. Okay, well, there you go. Yet. I mean, I don't think I have my vo- vo- voice assistant turned on either. Uh, it's not something I would use, but it is certainly a- an interesting feature. I don't know. I'm just trying to figure out how this would come in handy. I guess maybe if it's somebody that you haven't talked to in a long time and they pop up, you go, wow, it'd be nice to catch up with those people. But also, like, there's a danger in that being not exactly a great thing that yeah. you want to know somebody's close to you that you didn't want to have contact with or whatever that just so happens to still be in your phone. It's a weird feature, I think, and people are upset about it. Uh, I don't think it's one that I would enjoy, but again, I probably wouldn't have the the voice assistant turned on either, so not something I would have to worry about. But if you do have a Siri and you do use it, something to be aware of. Morning After with Nick and Big J. Coming up in a few minutes, some important stuff and your pop culture smackdown. Here's traffic. Spanning the globe in search of news. Important stuff. On the morning after with Nick and Big J. Yep, we got a situation, Big J. Turns out we got another wildfire here in the Treasure Valley and one that is fairly close. The Bureau of Land Management, other local agencies responded to a fire early this morning around 530, uh, what they're calling the Valley Fire. That, of course, is right up on Warm Springs Road. Lucky Peak, essentially, is where it is. So the foothills are very smoky, and uh, they have a bunch of people taking them. They've shut down Highway 21 as a result of this. Again? So, yeah. Uh, it is the second time this year the Lucky Peak has been on fire, uh, and so it's not great. Right now, Eckert Road also closed for public uh, fire crew safety as well. So avoid the area if you can. But uh, that is why you're seeing the smoke in the air. That's why you're smelling the smells. It's because, once again, we have an issue with Lucky Peak. And hopefully, the men and women that are assigned to put out that fire can do so. It was at uh, 25 acres last I saw. And uh, and it's continuing to be fought as the minutes go on. Here's the even worse news. We're supposed to have a high wind alert here today for uh, a a pressure system coming in. That's going to make things dramatically worse. 
yeah, hopefully they figure it out. But, uh, of course, uh, because of that, there's been some classes that are canceled. The Boise School District announced they're closing East Junior High School, Dallas Harris Elementary School as well because of the fire and smoke in the area. Uh, and so we will see what's going on there as this is a developing story and something that is continuing to be a big deal here in the Treasure Valley. And I don't remember any weather last night, which also gives me pause as to the cause of this particular fire. So a reminder to make sure that we are doing everything that we can to make sure these fires don't pop up here in the Treasure Valley because it's not great when they do. And again, thank you to the men and women who continue to fight this fire. And hopefully we'll get it under control here soon. We got homecoming tomorrow on the blue. Number 21, Boise State taking on the Aggies of Utah State. 5 p.m. kickoff. Fox Sports 2 has your coverage. Big J has your final score prediction. 54-21. All right, we'll see how it all works out. Game is sold out. Looks like it's going to be a beautiful day tomorrow, though, to check out some football if you want to do it. Uh, kickoff's not too late. You'll be able to get home by 9, 930 if you want to just do football and done. So there's some opportunities. Big G, I'm worried about the mental health of Chad Ojosinko. Oh, no. Again? Uh, he has decided to get into the octagon MMA style with former Pittsburgh Steelers linebacker James Harrison, and I feel like that's Ooh, a bad decision. Yeah, that's not. Uh, you're already giving up like uh, like 80 or 90 pounds, bro. Uh, and James Harrison, one of the, in my opinion, most underrated linebackers of a generation. Dude just got the job done and was not somebody you wanted to see on the other side of the line. That's for sure. Guys on his team are terrified of him. Uh, New Orleans is when it's going down the night before Super Bowl in February. Both are 46 years old. Uh, Of course, uh, Harrison's still very much in shape. Intense workouts. He has a huge following on social media because of them. Uh, Of course, Chad Johnson, uh, I mean, I guess he's known for being a nice guy and leaving really cool tips wherever he goes. Including here in the Treasure Valley. Right. I mean, so he's a good dude, but... I don't know if he wants to get in the uh, octagon, but both guys are still in shape. I think Johnson's going to have his work cut out for him, though. I don't think it's going to turn out well for him. I would not want to be in his shoes, but it's happening in February. Uh, I would come up with lots of excuses why that fight wouldn't happen. If I have my hamstring. Oh, no. Ocho Cinco and quick. Big J, Eminem's going to be a grandpa, dude. Congratulations. Uh, His daughter, Haley, uh, dropped some unexpected news on him. She's expecting her first child. Uh, They posted a video uh, last uh, over the last couple of days. And of course, uh, Eminem was shocked uh, and very, very happy. Uh, Apparently, it wasn't just for show for social media. Apparently, uh, they uh, Eminem did not know. And Haley is, in fact, pregnant with her first child. Uh, Her she just got married in May and her husband and her expecting the first child. So Eminem is about to be a grandfather, Big J, which is uh, crazy. Makes me feel a little bit old, but it's a reality of situation. So uh, I guess you got to come up with a grandpa nickname for Eminem, and I leave that in your court because uh, some shady doesn't exactly work. Yeah. Grandpa Slim, maybe. Is um, that something that works? Maybe just Eminem. That could work. Grandpa M. Morning After with Nick and Big J. There's your important stuff. It is the X Rocks. Here's traffic. Our culture smackdown. On the morning after with Nick and Big J. Yeah, we got a heck of a prize package here. A pack of six pairs of tickets to upcoming shows at the Knitting Factory for October, baby. Highly suspect is this Sunday at the Knitting Factory. We got Set It Off. That's next Tuesday. Uh, Along with that is uh, From Ashes to New. Uh, That's going to be a great show. Citizen Soldier on the 9th. Black Dahlia Murder on the 11th, Hawthorne Heights on the 12th, and then Flat Black coming in on the 14th. So a whole plethora of shows here. You get all these for you and a friend. You just got to beat me Pop Culture Smackdown first. All right, 208-287-1003. If you think you can take down Big J in Pop Culture Smackdown and claim these tickets for your own, we wish everybody the best of luck. Big J, are you ready? You betcha. And to the phones we go. Hello, the X. Hello. Hey, who is this? Nick. All right, Nick, you're up first. What character was Idris Elba in the Marvel Cinematic Universe? Was he Heimdall, Mysterio, or Luke Cage? Heimdall. That is correct. Right. You're officially taking on Big J. Big J, we referenced George Went earlier in the show. You knew he played Norm on Cheers. Now, Norm had several jobs during the uh, the actual sitcom Cheers, but what was he at the beginning of the show and the longest job that he held down during the show's actual telecast? I I'm going to give you choices. Oh, so thank you. take it easy. Okay. Well, wait. Uh, well, what were you going to say? No, I was going to say accountant. Okay. Plumber, accountant, or cab driver? Uh, I'm going to go with accountant. That is right. Right. Good job. Nailed it. 
Hey, uh, Nick, back to you. What actor played the Penguin in the Adam West version of the Batman TV <laughs> series? Cesar Romero, Burgess Meredith, or Peter Lorre? Cesar Romero. That is incorrect, unfortunately. I mean, but with authority. Yeah, he played the Joker, not uh, not the Penguin, which is what we're looking for. Hello, the X. Hello. <laughs> Hello? All right, well, we tried. Hello, the X. Hey, how's it going? Hey, we need to know what actor played the Penguin in the Adam West version of the Batman TV series. Cesar Romero, uh, Burgess uh, Meredith, or Peter Lorre? I'm just slightly a DSA. Huh? Huh? Wrong. All right. Well. Hello, the X. Hello. Hello. Hey. Uh, what actor played the Penguin in the Adam West version of the Batman TV series? Caesar Romero, Burgess Meredith, or Peter Lorre? Burgess Meredith. That is correct. All right. Burgess Meredith. You're officially taking on Big J. Big J. Lindsay Lohan was panned for playing what screen legend in a TV movie? Audrey Hepburn, Elizabeth Taylor, or Katherine Hepburn? Let's go with uh, Elizabeth Taylor. That is correct. Right. Back to you, sir. Every Major League Baseball team has officially retired Jackie Robinson's uniform number. What number is that? Number one, number 42, or number 19? 42. That is correct. Right. Big J, Matt LeBlanc of Friends fame got his first big break with what recurring ro- with a recurring role on what 90s sitcom, 80s, 90s sitcom. Um, I mean, Friends? No. Wrong. That was, that was, a, made him a star, sure. but it, that wasn't his first big break. Yeah, I, I, I didn't actually know, so I just brought him name. Alf, married with children or Blossom? <laughs> it's called Blossom? No. Married Wrong. with children? Right. Oh, man. Got a recurring role as Kelly's boyfriend. I'm married with children. Damn. Hey, congratulations, Eric. You got yourself a six-pack of tickets to the Knitting Factory. Congratulations, man. What's your name? Jeff. Jeff, enjoy those. Hang on one second. We'll hook you up with some information. Make sure you have everything that you need for all six of those shows. Morning After with Nick and Big J. We're talking lounge at the end of the universe next on the X-Rocks. That's the Smashing Pumpkins 1979 here on the Morning After with Nick and Big J. Always something going on to the Lounge of the End of the Universe. That does not change, which is why Friday mornings we check in with Jen Adams from the Lounge. Good morning, Jen. How are you? Good morning. And don't forget, it's now, uh, It really, it's been like the last few Fridays, not just me, but um, also Coral, who owns the Lounge along with me. Hi, <laughs> Coral. Um, she she's usually likes to stay in the background, but I like that she's been coming with me because uh, I forget stuff. And she's like, hey, you forgot this. So the, 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 the better half of my brain is been coming along. I have my moments. <laughs> <laughs> well, we appreciate that very much. Thank for you sure. for coming. Yeah, so uh, we're really excited. As we mentioned last week, we have uh, officially started our comedy season. So if you are a stand-up comedy fan, we have incredible acts coming in. And uh, and we've been doing uh, kind of a different model where uh, we, we you know have our comics in. And they're just here for one night. So if you hear of a comic you want to see, you have usually one opportunity. It's going to be through this fall and winter season. Uh, uh, tonight is no different. Um, and we have a comic that we, I think this is the the third time we have brought him back. We love him so much. Uh, you know him from uh, his uh, viral sensation uh, on TikTok as the Hispanic. Uh, and uh, and he's uh, just funny and the greatest guy. Uh, and he is John Polar Bear Gonzalez. Good morning, John. Yeah. Hey, John. Welcome it's, back, man. Thanks, man. It's weird to be sitting here just hearing somebody hype you up and talk about you. And you're like, when do I talk? Do I come in right now? Or like, what's going on? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, it's, she did a very good intro. Jen is very good at what she does. Usually well, women don't praise me like that. So this is great. I was just basking in it. I was like, this is great. This is nice. <laughs> Welcome back to the Treasure Valley, man. It, it's been a while since you've been back, but you have one of my favorite origin stories of somebody that's gotten into comedy because you you weren't sure it was something you wanted to do, and then you've been doing it now for almost 15 years. Yeah. You know what you're up to. Uh, tell us again the story of what made you really want to do this on a regular basis. Ah, man. It was um, when I was younger, the person who kind of like sparked my interest was Chris Farley. Um, seeing him do the Chippendale skit on SNL. Oh, man. That two fat guys Iconic. right there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, dude. As a chubby kid, I was like, we can't do that. We can't yeah. take our shirt no, off. Yeah. You know? And then I was like, this is great. And then I started using my weight as like a way to make people laugh. Yeah. And then I just got into it. And now if you do come to the show tonight, bring your singles because I do strip at the end. All right. <laughs> so it gets a little wild. It, it's pretty amazing, actually. I've seen I'm not I don't want to spoil it, but I like there's a couple of moves where I was like, 
that just happened. Oh my god! <laughs> like it's it's pretty it's pretty incredible. And you yeah. know, uh, also you, you internet famous for a very long time now. You mm-hmm. you certainly are really good at putting together those skits, and you've done a really good job with your mm-hmm. following. And then you kind of transitioned into stand up comedy, or was it one of those things where you're like, comedy is what I want to focus on? Period. Um, so I started doing stand up, and then I got into the skits. The skits took off, and if I had a choice, I would always do stand up because I just. I love it, man. I love being on stage. I love having a mic. I love making people laugh. I feel like it's a, <clears throat> excuse me. I feel like it's a um, an outlet for me, you know. Because like in normal, like a normal person, I'm just whatever. I'm chill, you know. But on stage, I'm totally different, and I just like become this person that like makes everybody laugh, and and I just I love doing it. It's great. It's it, awesome, man. It's uh, yeah, because it's almost like an alter ego. Yeah. Right. You yeah. can get up there and be whoever you want. A, a stripper once told me that about her life. And, yeah, and it works for her. So. No, and it's great. It's great. Like women love me because of con- if I didn't do stand up, there's no way I would pull any women. There's no, there's not a chance. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll make out with a chick. I'm like, there's, <laughs> there's no way. If, if I wasn't doing comedy, we wouldn't be doing this right now. You'd be like, ooh, get away, loser. You know. So stand up is great for that. It is, and you know, as you continue to do this and tour the country, I know you're planning big things for next year as well. Uh, you're also still kind of keeping up on your social media side of things. How hard is that with like keeping busy and making sure? Do you have like a calendar where you're like, I got to post here and here and here, or does it need to be organic to really kind of make those kind of videos that you want to do? Man, it's it's rough to be in a creative space while you're on the road so much. You know, like I, I'm trying to kind of like juggle everything at once because i do everything like i do my my social media um i write my material of course i edit all my skits i record all my skits i'm like a one-man show i even record my shows and edit the clips on those too so it's just like a one-man thing so you have to with me at least i have to like be in a in a position to be creative if i have like a week at home i'm like okay let's see what we can do i try not to force anything because i don't want to put out you know just horrible content you know like let me make sure it's funny if i'm laughing Maybe they'll laugh too. And then, of course, doing the content and the skits, you just never know. Like, you'll say, ah, this one's not that funny, but I need to post something. I'll post it. And then that one takes off and everybody loves it. Are you serious? (laughs) Y'all are dumb. (laughs) If if you haven't seen the the, uh, stuff that he puts on TikTok, uh, it, it, you're the Hispanic, right? Because yep. you're half white yep, half and half white, Hispanic. Hispanic yep. And uh, I, what I love so much about it is, like, it, you're. It's kind of like you're highlighting the differences, but really, in the end of the video, I mean, not only is it really funny, but uh, you just kind of realize, like, okay, every human being's dealing with the same problems, but just yeah. coming at it from a different angle. So it's just really, really fun. Yeah, so uh, if you haven't cultures. seen it, what what is the TikTok channel so people can go check it out um, before they come to the show tonight? Yeah, yeah, uh, Polar Bear Comedy. You'll be able to go there and see it. They're I've, so funny. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And you can look it up anywhere. I have a, I have a bunch of skits everywhere, uh, but TikTok is, is one. They don't really like me too much anymore uh, <laughs> because I posted some stuff that went against the community guidelines community or whatever. Guidelines. Just full yeah. male nudity, right? Yeah. Eh, you know, <laughs> come on. My, my, one of my favorite ones was um, the difference in uh, how your a Hispanic grandmother or your, uh, or like, like between white and Hispanic people dealing with when you have a cold. Oh, yeah. It was hilarious. Yeah, because you get the egg. You get the egg and they rub it on you. <laughs> it makes no sense whatsoever. No sense. With uh, with you doing all this on your own, you're all doing this, how do you avoid burnout? Like, what do you do to get away? Because that's a lot of work man it's it a lot is of work. i've i've had my moments of burnout for sure you know um i've especially getting older i just try to listen to my body as much as i can like if i feel like my body's not there i'm like all right dude we need to take a day you know and i took a day before i came out here because i was like going for a while and i was like we gotta we gotta do boy seat then we gotta go to portland chill out dude yeah. just take a day rest chill what, out you what know? does that look like for you taking a break resting um usually just chilling at home you know, whether it's playing games or watching TV, go. whatever, you know what I'm saying? But just like take a day for you and just chill, you know, eat whatever you want, but go to the gym first. <laughs> you you fat piece of, you know, whatever. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> you got to work that, for that yeah. pizza. You know? well, well, now we know what your inner talk sounds <laughs> like. Oh, it's awful. <laughs> Look up David Goggins. That's my inner talk right there. Oh, boy. He, yeah, he talks to me in my head. Oh, it's not no. cool. It's, uh, it's not nice. It's yeah, not nice. No. It's not at all.
Right. It's not. John Gonzalez joins us. Polar Bear in town tonight at the Lounge at the End of the Universe. LoungeBoise.com is where you can grab your tickets. I, I love the way that you infuse the styles in your stand-up with bilingual comedy. You have some fun up to on stage. Is that the way you grew up? Were you growing up in a household that kind of went both ways and, and argued in different languages and had some fun, so you kind of learned both of those and picked those up as you went? Oh, yeah. No, for sure, man. Um, that was... My dad would always talk to my grandparents and his brothers and sisters in Spanish, you know? So, like... I, I'm not even fluent in Spanish, but I've always been good at, like, impressions. Yeah. And so I would just hear it, and I would mimic it, and I just <laughs> got, like, a great accent. Like, I have such a good accent. Like, if I go to a taco truck, I can order food, of course, because that's just, <laughs> I, I have titties. So I have to know how to order food. <laughs> you know? But when I talk Spanish, they think that I'm fluent, and they go off, and I'm like, ah. Yeah. I set myself up. <laughs> Dang. I just wanted an enchilada. And now I'm pretending I'm narcoleptic. <laughs> right. That's what the white side. <laughs> lo siento, lo siento. Sorry. Ooh, yeah. Lots of sorry. nodding and smiling. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Cilantro, right. tubian. Okay. Thank you, sir. <laughs> but it's really fun how you can incorporate it in, in, in your comedy, and it's very clear that your family made it, made, played a big part in you growing up and probably still do in some of the stuff that you kind of work into your yeah, act, right? Definitely, man. Yeah. My, uh, my dad's a... Uh, I love him to death, but he's a psychopath. He's he's uh, he's he's crazy, man. He's the type like the Hispanic gene runs strong in him. Like if he's awake, everybody has to be awake. If he comes home and you're not doing anything, he's pissed off at the world. <laughs> he doesn't want you laying around. There is no rest days for him. Right. I guess that's why I like taking him now because I never got to take him with him. He's the type that would come in and like kick your bed. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. oh, dad, get out of here, please, dude. But now I got my own spot, so take that, Dad. There you go. You can sleep in if you want. I love it. I love it. Uh, John, you're a very funny dude. We already kind of talked about some of the socials. or any other places that people can follow you on social media if they want to, or is that just the one place you want to look? Um, no, if you look up Polar Bear Comedy on Google, you'll find me everywhere. I'm on Instagram. I'm on Facebook. I'm on TikTok, YouTube. All of those are good things, man. And I have a bunch of stand-up clips that I have up there now because I've been kind of like doing that more and getting crowd work. Um, there is a, there's a really funny clip. Um, of a dude in Chicago who called me a joto. Oh, I just watched that Did this you? morning. Yeah. Yes, yeah. it was so funny. Yeah, he called me a joto on stage, but um, and and that means gay. Um, <laughs> not really, but just whatever. But he called me that, and he was f drinking the fruitiest drink ever. Yeah. Like it was like a blue Hawaiian with like fruit. And I was like, "Don't call me a joto. <laughs> this is your drink, bro. Don't do that." <laughs> and and I just he's trying to make you drink it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Why not? You and then I, I I took a sip and I turned gay. It was weird. It was. <laughs> <laughs> like a split second though I didn't like you know do anything to a guy that night not that there's right. anything wrong with that but you know I, I just if I would have drank the whole thing probably you never know you would have gone home with that guy know. yeah Here probably you, you can check yeah. out more on the social media channels you can certainly see it tonight in action we encourage you to do that it yeah, is at loungeboise.com go ahead Jim. I do want to say uh, if you're going to get your tickets you should do it soon the VIP are all sold out already we sold out of those the day before yesterday so we have general admission tickets and uh, you know our club it's a 200 seater like it's you're even in the back you're still in the front it's mm -hmm. a, a really great room for comedy that way it's nice and intimate but uh, yeah you you, you want to grab your tickets pretty soon because no VIP left. General admission. Uh, and uh, and then uh, check out on the website, loungeboise.com. For uh, if you can't make it tonight, uh, you suck. But, uh, <laughs> but that's okay uh, because there's a lot of other great shows coming up. So uh, so definitely uh, go to loungeboise.com. But come tonight because um, you know you're gonna see all of John at some point. Yeah, it's gonna yeah. be good. It's gonna it's, be good. It's a lot of fun. And if you like dark comedy, there's some dark jokes in there. Yes. I've been working on the new hour, so there's there's some dark stuff there that'll make go. you go, oh. You know we like that. Yeah. Check it out for yourself. Loungeboise.com is where you can grab tickets. John, thanks for coming in, man. We Thank appreciate you. it, brother. Thank you, Jen. Thank you, Coral. We always love you guys. You guys. Thank you. Morning after with Nick and Big J. Textual healing next on the X. Lee, it's headlines on the morning after with Nick and Big J. Headlines brought to you by Half Price Friday going on right now at xrock.com. There's a Half Price Friday deal for a couple of great Treasure Valley restaurants. Barbecue for Life and Hit List, a couple of sister restaurants that do some fantastic food, whether you're into barbecue or burgers. They got you covered, and this Half Price Friday can cover both of those locations, whichever one you want. You can grab $50 worth of food to Barbecue for Life in the Hit List for just $25. While supplies last, there's already a bunch of them gone, so get them while you can. xrock.com will get you this Half Price Friday deal. Uh, both of those places, as far as I'm concerned, are Nick-approved. I don't know if you've been to the Hit List yet, but it is great. Mm-hmm.
Uh, so check it out for yourself. Half Price Friday available now at xrock.com. Headlines are as follows. Terms and condition. What a weird choice. And not today, Satan. What a weird choice. A New York City police officer has been fined for leaving bizarre voice messages after a citizen complained about the parking on his street that police particularly were taking up some of the parking. Uh, and apparently, Officer Brendan Sullivan left a voicemail with a citizen that complained in which he pretended to be a former romantic partner, leaving breathy, seducive messages, and then uh, made sheep noises and seal noises on voicemails as well. The citizen in question, Paul Vogel, received these calls over the span of 10 months, uh, over the years mm. 2021 and 2022. And so the officer was fined $500 for seeking to discourage a citizen from exercising his rights about government action. Uh, he also lost 60 days of leave for the prank phone calls. A weird call, I guess, to yeah. do that kind of stuff. I'm not sure. I mean, I can understand being annoyed by it, but odds are you probably were taking advantage of the situation, didn't like being called on it, and then decided to do some really, really weird things on top of all that. So uh, sure. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what would possess somebody to do those things, but they were done. Terms and conditions or not today, Satan. Not today, Satan. Florida already has more than enough issues, but apparently now Satan has started harassing women there. According to a Halai police report, Robert Para was arrested after police say he entered a woman's home completely naked, jumped on top of her bed and said he was Satan. And this would be her last day on earth. Obviously, yeah. nobody wants to hear those words. Yeah, no, that's bad. So the uh, the 26-year-old Robert entered the victim's home and when she stepped outside to fix her key card, then grabbed uh, some, uh, basically took off his clothes, grabbed a towel and jumped on top of her bed and told her he was the devil. She managed to get away and call police who arrived on the scene to find him screaming in her house as he was screaming, saying he didn't do anything the uh, and basically said that the victim was his guardian angel and he was trying to be protected. So I think he's got he's got a mental health crisis going on currently. Sounds like it, yeah. That he could probably need some assistance with. So uh, do us all a favor: don't break into people's houses and take off all your clothes, please. Everybody, it's just not. That would be a weird situation to be confronted with. Yep. And then somebody screaming that they're Satan, and nobody wants that either. Wrap it up with terms and conditions. We have another situation where we don't necessarily read everything that we sign automatically, and we are getting bitten in the tail as we go forward. A couple that was involved in a Uber crash cannot sue the company because they agreed to Uber Eats terms of service at one point in their life, according to a New Jersey court. The ruling determined that the couple agreed to arbitration automatically when they placed an Uber Eats order. John and Georgia McGinty were sitting in the back of an Uber in March of 2022 when the driver ran a red light and was T-boned. The couple suffered, suffered multiple broken bones. Georgia required surgery. And uh, they were horrified to find out that because they at one point agreed to the terms and conditions of Uber Eats, that means that they can no longer sue Uber in any way, shape, or form. They automatically agree to arbitration. There are lots of company, like, for instance, yeah. Disney's a big part of this. If you agree to Disney yeah. Plus, if you're a Disney's Plus subscriber, you cannot sue Disney. That's part of the terms and conditions, no matter what happens or where it happens. And so... I don't know what happened in our lives, but at some point we stopped reading all these things and just clicking because okay to everything. Because we're not lawyers. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I mean, mean, I mean, come on. You've seen the terms of uh, sure. any of these agreements. Sure. I mean, it would take you hours to read through them. I'm just saying there was a point in our society where this would have been caught long before it was a catastrophic incident. And somebody would have stepped up and said, hey, by the way, yeah. if you're a Disney Plus subscriber, Keep this in mind moving forward. None of us knew until there was a terrible situation that happened and they weren't allowed to sue because we all signed these terms and conditions that we weren't familiar with and weren't aware were out there. But we're all part of this. Yeah. Like if you've ever had Uber Eats delivered, you can't sue Uber. If you've ever had Disney Plus, you can't sue Disney. It's it's weird, but they can put anything they want in those terms and conditions. And we check that little box and we sign up and we're yeah, all liable to it. I'm not a lawyer. And I don't want to hire a lawyer just to download an app. No, but I mean... So, something's got to be done. Would that be a deal? Break? Well, it, they don't care. I mean, why uh, would the company Because care? it's the job of our government to protect the citizens. This is not protecting the citizens, allowing this to happen. So we would have no apps or anything if, obviously, we would we would not sign in that and say, you know what, if I'm in an accident in this Uber, I can't sue you. I'm not going to sign up for that. Yeah. Uh, now, again, it's not saying that you can't have money. It's just that you automatically agree to arbitration. So... There's already somebody ta figuring this out for you as opposed to, you know, kind of pitching your case in a court of law kind of a thing. So it's not saying that you're not going to be kind of denied any kind of financial restitution. It's just 
you're denied your day in court, which is a huge advantage for whatever company you happen to yeah. be liable again. Morning after with Nick and Big J. We got your bad impressions. They're next on the X. Looking for some bad impressions. So far, I'm not impressed. On the morning after with Nick and Big J. Yeah, up for grabs here. We got some tickets. Uh, show happening Sunday night out at the Ford Idaho Center Amphitheater. Breaking Benjamin. We got Stained. Daughtry. Guess what? You're also going to get to meet Chris Daughtry uh, here if you win these tickets. So uh, you just got to figure out bad impressions today. It will be a classic, Nick. Classic. All right, 208-287-1003 if you want this pretty awesome prize package for Sunday's show at the Ford Idaho Center Amphitheater. Tickets are yours and everything else as well. All you have to do is figure out who Big J's trying to be. you got three clues to help you get there. If you can do so in three or less, congratulations. This prize is yours, and hopefully you're happy. To the phones we go. Hello, VX. Do I get to win again yet? No, I don't know. When was the last time you you won? I mean, what a... No. I was... No? He doesn't know who you are, sir. When was the last time you won? Uh, I won uh, Highly Suspect tickets last week. Well, you can't go to this show then because yeah, it's the same, same day. Same night. Sorry, man. But well, we wait. Won. What if I trade in the tickets for these ones? What do we look like? You're going to make Big J angry. I'm just going to say no. Thank you. Hello, The X. Have fun at the Highly Suspect show for free. Hello. Yeah, I was just calling in for the to do the bad impressions wonderful man what's your name rob all right rob here we go i'm the freaking prince of darkness ozzy osborne there we go one and done good job man hang on one second we'll hook you up with this breaking benjamin prize package what were clues two and three sharon and And why is Ozzy in the news? Uh, Ozzy is going to be inducted into the uh, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, Nick, and he's bringing friends with him. Uh, this is happening on the 19th at the Rock and Mortgage Fieldhouse in Cleveland. He told Rolling Stone that Jack Black will induct him. Quote, Jack invited my family to the School of Rock movie premiere back in 2002. I've uh, always been a big fan of his. Jack is one of the few great actors that is always a genuine rock and roller and not acting the part. Uh, and play- paying a tribute in song will be Billy Idol. Tools Maynard James Keenan and Jelly Roll. Ozzy says Billy Idol is a rock icon. His music is timeless. Billy should be inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Maynard has been a true friend of him and the family since 1997. And uh, he just loves Jelly Roll. So let's do it. Yeah, I saw Robert Trujillo is also going to be yeah. part of that. It's going to be a big brouhaha. They're doing the standard thing where they have the big, gigantic, live, unedited portion of things. Used to be on HBO. Now it's on Disney+. Plus. Which you can watch, and then they're going to air like a three-hour highlight show coming up on ABC a little bit further down the road. But if you want to check out everything that's happening, because, you know what, Dave Matthews Band's getting in, Tribe Called Quest, uh, Ozzy Osbourne, a bunch of people are getting into the Hall of Fame. The whole unedited thing will be on Disney Plus on the 19th. You can check it out there. Will you be watching, Big J? Uh, I'll probably not the live unedited version, but uh, it's always kind of fun to catch it uh, in its completed form. Yeah, I don't know if, I, did they say Ozzy's going to be performing? I don't think so. Because I think it's all like a musical tribute to him, and uh, and that's part of it, too. So I don't think he's going to actually take the stage and sing, but you never know. Uh, You never know what happens at these things. That's why you tune in. Morning After with Nick and Big J. We'll wrap up the show here next on the X-Rocks. Save through Monday. Running pool, that is bodies, and that's going to wrap up the Morning After with Nick and Big J on this Friday for the week. Thank you very much for hanging out with us. We always appreciate it. Special thank you to Jen Coral from Lounge at the End of the Universe and John Polnerbear Gonzalez for popping by, talking about his big show tonight at the Lounge at the End of the Universe. Lounge Boise is where you can grab your tickets. Thank you to Big J for giving me my birthday present. I do appreciate mm-hmm. it. Uh, and thank you all for hanging out with us and uh, trying to solve the mystery of the uh, the P Bandit there in Pasadena. We didn't quite have a solution, but we have some theories, and I think that's a pretty good uh, kind of, uh, I guess, I want to say Mark to set for our We're Going to Hell stories, especially with Detective Big J. It's an important precedent to set that we have some sort of path that they can go down to try to figure this thing out. But it does leave you with the floor, Big J. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to reiterate. Uh, I hope you have a great birthday weekend with uh, with the boys. Thank and, you, man. Uh, that uh, you get a little chance to take a breather before the next craziness. Uh, yeah, and then, of course, I've got a uh, short but uh, very happy vacation that I'm looking forward to next weekend. Uh, so that'll be very, very nice. It's like my birthday present to myself. Ah. So I am, mm-hmm. uh, I'm heading back to Wisconsin to visit my mom and my family and also take in a Green Bay Packers game. So I am very excited for for that little kind of uh, getaway. But thank you for the birthday wishes. I do appreciate it, my friend.
Morning After with Nick and Big J. That is it for us. Jason Drew's up next. Have a good one. It's the X Rocks. Huh.